Hello everyone, this is Sayer G, founder of GreenMedInfo.com, and we're going to look today at what is probably the most promising singular compound that has been researched over the past 20 years for cancer prevention and treatment. Now, this is not research that has been uh, given the FDA approval, so you will not see any type of drug that contains curcumin. There's no patented medicine, for example, that is going to be curcumin-based. However, billions of dollars of research has flowed into looking at this compound because it, it shows so much value. There's a um, impasse when it comes to getting it to the level of you know the phase one, two, three clinical trials required for you know the FDA drug approval process but that is because it's not patentable so many of the researchers have attempted to generate analogs that are semi-synthetic or synthetic to reproduce the uh, amazing properties of this compound but have been largely unsuccessful so uh, thankfully we have as a byproduct of this you know profit driven motive massive amounts of research now showing that indeed this substance which is natural which is found in the uh, root of the turmeric plant about three to four percent of the dry weight of that root is the curcumin uh, compound and this is the uh, primary polyphenol that gives the plant its saffron or golden color and is certainly uh, without a doubt um, the most therapeutic compound that has been studied alongside for example resveratrol and then green tea extracts like EGCG so those three are probably the most well known now what we've done at Green Info is taken a lot of this research and put it onto a single page on our database and this is research that is technically open access meaning we don't really require a logged in user or a membership uh, feature to access all the studies but the problem of course is that there's so many of them 1,482. So if you were to go down the page and try to find the exact article that you're looking for, it'd be a little challenging. You could, of course, use our search engine so to target uh, the data you're looking for. Say it's curcumin and weight loss or curcumin and prostate cancer. Instead, we've come up with some features for our database users which enable you to see all of the research in a quick glance. So, for example, 152 articles on oxidative stress and curcumin, 52 on inflammation reduction. And even here, because there's such a wide range of uh, conditions that have been studied, uh, it's a little bit overwhelming, right? So you could, you could spend a minute just going down this list of substances. So what we've done is create the advanced sorting options. So not only can you sort it by what we call cumulative knowledge, which is a sort of a value given to how much human, animal, in vitro research exists so that you can see it on one glance. Higher amount of CK, cumulative knowledge, the more uh, research and the higher quality research there is to support you know this connection between disease reduction and a natural substance so the other way would be sort articles by publish date so you could sort it by newest to late um, oldest or oldest to newest and then of course you have quick summary so this is what we're looking at here is I'm gonna hit ascending so that we can get it to uh, re reshuffle into an A to Z list so that way I can quickly navigate to what I'm looking for. So you get the A's. And again, this is a long list, so we're going to go scoot on down to prostate, just as an example. Um, prostate cancer, for example, and curcumin. So what you'll see here is that there's technically now 41 studies on a database on prostate cancer curcumin. And these are all actually positive studies. So let's hit focus article. And you'll see them all pop up now to the top. So these are the 42 studies on curcumin and prostate cancer, uh, either inducing programmed cell death or, you know, reducing uh, gene expression associated with the cancerous phenotype, anti-metastatic properties, 
Um, it's just quite amazing the amount of research just on this one little connection. And of course, you can always hit create a focus page, which produces a public URL of th those results that then can be linked to in a body of an email, say to an integrative physician who is uh, questioning the value of this as an integrative therapy. Or you can hit create a focus PDF, a feature we love because what it does is it takes all the data on our site, puts it into a PDF, which links all of that data to the National Library of Medicine's uh, citation location. Okay, so instead of this document taking whoever's using it back to our site, it's actually going to, if you click one of these citations, take you right to the National Library of Medicine's um, bibliographic uh, database known as Medline. And then from there, of course, you can do your own exploring. And let's do that right now because I want you to see where all this research came from. If you type in curcumin, you're going to see available on this National Treasure House 5,833 studies. That's an immense amount of research. And these are all published, peer reviewed, many of them in, uh, you know, high impact journals, the ones that have the gravitas and credibility that everyone's looking for and that many claim natural medicine does not have. So that's an overwhelming amount of data. And let's look at the um, history of it. Back in 1970, there was one study published on the topic. Let's go to 83, 4. And then around 2000, you see this inflection of the curve, an exponential leap, 108 in just 2000 alone. And let's go to 2009. 523 studies in that year. And let's look at last year, 866. And here we are in July of 2013, and there's 609 already. So obviously the interest is massive, not just among those within the consumer sort of market who are interested in taking a supplement, but the researchers themselves are really quite smitten over this amazing substance. And why is that? Well, one of the reasons is because these substances have the ability, I'm just going back to the page, of expressing so many different therapeutic actions simultaneously that it's sort of a mystery and it's extremely intriguing to these researchers. So what we've done is taken these 1400 plus studies and we've sliced them across different indexes. So you saw the, the disease um, uh, index, right? So now you have the what we call pharmacological actions. They could also be called physiological actions because these are the actions that this spice has on pathways in the human body. And this is the spectrum, 160, which is a huge amount of ways of modulating these really fragile pathways within the body, enzyme pathways, uh, hormonal pathways, neurochemical pathways, gene expression, um, changing the phenotype of the cell, its differentiation in cancer. I mean, it's remarkable. There's so many different ways you can look at it. You can look at the steroidal-like anti-inflammatory properties, you know, where they're comparing it to, let's say, injected hydrocortisone versus an animal eating it and showing similar activity at reducing inflammation. Or you can look at it in terms of its NSAID-like properties, okay? So your non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like aspirin and ibuprofen, they have the ability to suppress the cyclooxygenase enzyme, COX-2, which reduces inflammation. Well, so does curcumin. And then you have um, all types of other properties that you wouldn't even really imagine are associated with this compound. You know, anti-malarial, anti-mycobacterial, antiviral. There's 15 studies on that connection alone. 297 studies on the program cell death inducing properties of curcumin, which is the ultimate way in which to, quote, treat or combat cancer, is you just induce this natural suicidal program within the cancer cell. That cell which does not want to die, that's been immortalized, well, meet curcumin and, you know, go back into the void so that, you know, the whole body can be healthy. Uh, you know, it goes on and on and on. It's quite amazing. And so this is what we've done. We've gathered this research, made it freely available, and also given those who are more serious about the research or maybe use it in their profession, ways of manipulating and, and disseminating the data that will further empower them and really help us to enlarge in the awareness that natural medicine is not 
really an alternative any longer, okay? The original medicine used by our ancestors, okay, for literally hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years, and which got us here today, is now being confirmed by a vast body of science. And so those who claim that there is no role or place within the, quote, evidence-based medical model for natural compounds really need to wake up. And if you have someone who questions this, just take them the agreement info, let them use the free professional uh, trial for a day and, and see all the data in this way, or just go explore the 20,000 plus abstracts and, uh, you know, get, get an informed choice going. Thank you for tuning in.